everyone, it's Grayson back again for shortflyingvideo.com. We have another half of Bex tutorial for you to get your teeth into. In today's tutorial, I'll be following part one of my de-resonant video series and uh, showing you some more techniques about how to make your video look crap, distorted, broken up, and staticky. Now, as you've seen from the previous video clip, there's a fair number of effects to cover here. So this tutorial will probably um, stretch over either two, possibly even three sections. Um, so let's just run down some of the things that I'll be covering here. Obviously, we've got this uh, kind of low res scan line effect with some uh, reflection and vignetting to make it look as though we've got a, um, a TV monitor. Um, we've also got some severe picture breakup here with interference lines and uh, static noise. We've also got uh, some ghosting. We've got uh, horizontal hold. I've even thrown in uh, traveling black bar, which is uh, typically something you see when you actually point a video camera at a CRT monitor or an old uh, television. And finally, one of my personal favorites, the uh, color channel separation. So let's get started at the beginning. I've got my base footage here, but obviously you can throw in uh, any footage you like. So the first thing we're going to do is turn this piece of base footage into uh, something that looks like it's being played back on a low resolution computer monitor. Now uh, there are three stages to this. Uh, the first one you probably uh, know already because it's pretty simple. And that's to create a vignette. So we're going to create a new solid and we'll call it monitor outline and we'll make it black. Then go to the shape tool and find your rounded rectangle. Select that and draw a rounded rectangle over your monitor outline solid. And that'll create a mask. So if I just uh, tap M twice to bring up the full mask properties, I'm gonna swap the uh, mask to subtract And that gives us this solid, rounded monitor outline. Now, if you want to make it more rounded, which I do, just need to uh, play around with the nodes a little. So grab the uh, selection tool. I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing. Select a node. Hold down Shift to keep it on the uh, horizontal line or the vertical line and just drag it to its new position and then do the same with the other corner node so select it, hold down shift and drag it downwards and then grab one of the uh, Bezier curve handles and do the same thing, hold down shift while you drag it and just pull it towards the top corner and that will give you this much more rounded outline so I'm just going to quickly do that with the uh, remaining nodes. Okay, so that's our rough monitor outline. Now we're just going to go to the mask feather properties and just increase the feather value to about 60 pixels. And that'll just soften off the edges to give you that more rounded effect. Now if you actually want to shrink or expand the mask, um, just go to the mask expansion and uh, drag it in or out to give it that look that you want. I might just um, take it to a value of minus 15 to bring the border in a little bit. Okay, so that's looking good so far. Next step is to add some scan lines. So uh, right click and select new adjustment layer and we'll call this scan lines. In your effects and presets panel, find the Venetian blinds transition effect and drag and drop that onto your scan lines adjustment layer. Now initially that doesn't have any effect at all, as you can see, so uh, just need to make a couple of changes so it looks how we want it to. The first thing to do is change the direction from 0 to 90 degrees, and then we can increase the transition completion to about 20%. And that gives us these uh, solid black lines running through the image. Now you can adjust the uh, number of lines by uh, dragging the width value. So if we keep that to about 15, 
that looks about right for me but obviously it's a question of personal taste so do whatever you like and uh, just to finish off the look we're going to feather off the edges so they don't look quite so uh, significant so I've just uh, increased that to a value of 8 and that gives us um, a fairly convincing low res computer monitor so our next step in creating a realistic looking um, old school computer monitor is to create some highlights off of the glass screen so we're just going to create a new solid and we'll call it monitor reflections and hit OK then uh, grab the ellipse tool I'm just going to draw a, an elliptical mask up in the top right hand corner select the selection tool and just click away from the mask so you get the uh, node editing mode up and we'll just play around with the shape and look of this oval so that it kind of matches with the look and feel of a curved computer monitor. Okay, that's a little bit severe at the moment, so twirl down the mask properties and reduce the mask opacity to about 60% and then increase the mask feather to about 55 pixels and that just gives it that false looking uh, highlight now if you want a matching one down at the bottom just to kind of really round off that curved screen effect just duplicate your monitor reflections layer tap R to bring up the rotation value and spin it by 180 degrees and that'll drop another one down on the bottom now that's a little bit too much so I'm going to drop the opacity down even further, this time probably about 18%. Okay, so now I'm talking from a, uh, a low-res computer monitor with some nice uh, highlights on it. Now you could probably do a little bit more work with the highlights. You can actually use um, a shaped mask, even possibly some more sophisticated reflections, but uh, this will do for now. Final stage in this tutorial is to uh, just roughen it up with some noise, so I'm going to create another new adjustment layer. We'll call this static. Go to your effects and presets panel and find the noise effect and just drag that onto our new adjustment layer. Now you can vary the amount of noise however you like. I think we'll be looking for something around the 25% uh, mark for just some baseline noise. Now you also note it uh, uses color noise by default, which may be the look you're after. Personally, I prefer monochromatic noise. It's a little bit more like uh, film grain and a bit grittier. Now, if you want to increase that um, noise value, as I have done in the previous clip, you simply create a keyframe and uh, adjust the amount of noise to suit. So I've just taken it up to uh, 71% and then back down to 25 and as you can see that gives us that growing static of an increasing signal loss okay that'll do for now uh, in the next tutorial I'll be showing you uh, some of the more specific features like the horizontal breakup the uh, horizontal hold the horizontal black bar there's a lot of horizontal stuff going on here and uh, the color separation. So uh, thanks for watching, hope you found this useful, and I'll see you next time.